I love the Holy Spirit because it is the sort of person of God that we try to represent in so many fantastic and amazing ways. Right? Throughout Scripture, we hear this amazing sort of sound and personification of that spirit. You know, the rushing wind, right? The earthquake, the roaring fire, the tongues of fire, those little ways in which God is being made manifest in that beautiful spirit. And yet, my favorite still has to be the hafuwa, the breath of God, the the wisp of God, that the the littlest sort of movement, right? You know, kind of like we take one of these candles, I'm gonna try try to do this, right? And I can blow a little too hard and I blow it out. (laughs) I'll practice that one for tomorrow. But my point is, that was supposed to be a little less noticeable. (laughs) That's what I mean by haruwa. Even if you breathe too hard, you're making too much noise for that Holy Spirit, right? Holy Spirit is just this subtle little movement, and yet it is the very action, it's the very instantiation of God that we invite whenever we want something to be renewed, whenever we want something to be transformed, right? When we do baptism, tomorrow we're going to have baptism at the Mass, so we're going to invite the Holy Spirit to come down and transform ordinary water into holy water, right? We're going to ask the Spirit to come down and claim this infant as a member of the person of Christ, as a member of the community of faith, priest, prophet, and king. This moment is sort of, you know, this beautiful thing, but it is so incredibly subtle, so subtle, in fact, that I think it's easy to miss. So easy to miss that I think that I miss the great invitation of what this feast really means for all of us, that each and every one of us have our moment in which tongues of fire, that the sort of that burning sensation at the top of your head when you're like kind of excited about something, right? That, that little feeling where your, your, your hairs are like kind of feeling fun and like, okay, something's up. That's the Holy Spirit. And that's the invitation to help us renew the face of the earth. And on some levels, I, I think we have to contemplate that idea. What is the difference between renewal and birth, for example, right? Like birth is a radical transformation, something that was not, it becomes reality, it becomes manifest in this world, right? It's an incredibly sort of loud and, and complex and, and beautiful, but, but, but long process, right? I mean, birth is, is something I've never done myself other than being born. Right, but I, you know, have read and heard that it's a, it can become somewhat a, a laborious process. That was a pun. I got a groan. That's a point. But, but where I'm going with this, in the sense that, like, birth, in a sense, is, is a very different process, right? So the birth of the church suddenly was magnificent, right? There was these changing of the ability to hear and speak different tongues and languages, the, the change in sort of, like, the ability to sort of transform the very world there. And even the apostles themselves are sort of remarkably transformed. And we, we really see this in our reading cycle this year, right? We're, we're talking from Luke a lot this year. Right? And we have been reading from the Acts of the Apostles through the Easter season. And if you juxtapose the Apostles in Luke and the Apostles in Part 2, they seem like totally different people. Right? In Luke, much like the other synoptic tradition, the Apostles miss the point a lot. They're fearful. They're hiding. They're running. Often they don't get what God is inviting them to do, even though Jesus is standing right next to them or sleeping in the boat at the stern. Wherever it happens to be, despite the closeness of that relationship, they seem to miss the very thing that Christ is inviting them to do, this sort of, this ability to be magnified, glorified, and in this deep divine relationship. They miss it. But just a couple chapters into the Acts of the Apostles, Suddenly, Peter's walking by with Andrew, and he, his shadow falls on a paralytic, somebody who's been paralyzed forever, and the very, the very sort of touch of that shadow, not even his own physical touch, his shadow touches that, you know, that broken person, and that's enough for him to look and say, get on up, come on, let's play. That's a paraphrase. But that invitation to recognize that in that moment, 
This, the disciples have been transformed. They are no longer afraid. They are no longer fearing for their lives in the same way. That they now have the power to sort of help the church be born into this world and make decisions. We talked a couple weeks ago about the first council of Jerusalem, right? And as we see both the apostles and eventually Paul have their transformation, this sort of wonderful moment in which this thing, this this barely perceptible thing, even less than blowing out a candle, is this thing that has the power to animate, to renew, to transform, and to be part of what brings God's kingdom of, the, bring the kingdom of God here and now, to bring it present in our world. But there's, there's a cost, and it, be, and it begins with listening, right? It begins with hearing what God is inviting us to do, what is being moved on our hearts. Ignatius of Loyola, I think his greatest genius is that he tells us that feelings matter. How we feel about a thing tells us some important data. It is not the only thing, it's not the only source of data, but our feelings do matter and we need and must listen to them. When we are excited, when something happens and we are angry, when we are sort of confused and when we are sad, all of those feelings you know, and our world gives us plenty of opportunities to notice each of those feelings. Just open up today's paper and you see headline after headline of things that sort of stir in anxiety or fear or sadness and perhaps happiness. But, but the truth is that there's a lot going on in this world. And if we truly are going to imbibe and sort of be marinating in this sense of the Holy Spirit, the invitation for us is to actually listen to that little what is God inviting us to do? How are we being invited to participate in that renewal? That does not mean that we have to go out and transform the world overnight. In fact, I'm not sure that that's how it works. But where it begins is those little moments of, you know what, I've got an extra weekend. In, in two weekends, you know, parishioners from St. Thomas More will help a Habitat for Humanity house. And just that, that small volunteering of time, that small action to say, yes, I'm going to listen to that spirit. Or, or perhaps it's, you know, in other ways in which we, we participate in the liturgy by volunteering. Or maybe it's we participate in the community by tutoring or doing whatever it happens to be. But those, those little ways, not gigantic ways in which we necessarily need to make waves. Those are important, but they will be because a community has begun rowing in the same direction, because a community has begun listening, because a community begins to move in a way that begins to make waves that no one can ignore. This is how great change happens. And so the question and the invitation is where do we need to be renewed? Our church right now, this, this local church of the Archdiocese, is participating in a synodal process in which the church hopes to understand that movement. We have been listening to this process through our own examine here at St. Thomas More, and time and time again, there are some really key facets. The first is that we are called to welcome. And, and if we can say that from the pulpit, if we can say that from here, that's, that's one thing. But it's an entirely different reality when each of you make that welcome manifest. Right? And I'm not going to do the, the thing like at the end of Mass where you have to go talk to someone else. We're not quite at that point yet. But I am inviting you to think about that, right? I can't meet each and every person. And Lord knows I forget people and names. I'm awful at that. I wish I had Father Warren's gift in that, right? But you guys can make those connections. You guys can invite people into your world. You guys can be sort of the eyes and ears of the broader community to invite people into that process. You know, or if we say that we really want to be a community of justice, then, then we have to be a community that truly like honors people's presence. You know, Father Warren and myself try to time and again always say, thank you for your presence here. Thank you for the gift of your very physical self. Because this, more than anything, is already an, an amazing sign of God's spirit. Or maybe it's just sort of listening to the multitude of opportunities to go and to serve in just these small ways. You know, today the young adults, a lot of them were at, you know, um, the, the, uh, of course the name has run out of my head, eating... Uh, 
Okay, they're all throwing out names. See, listen to all these places that people are, you thought this was on purpose, but listen to all the places that people can talk about where there is ways of giving help and, and, and feeding people and feeding the poor and the hungry and the marginalized. That, my friends, is just those small ways in which you can do that. You know, Feed My Starving Children is the place that I was thinking of, and I wasn't gonna let it go until I got back there. Thank you, Addie, for helping like, you know, get that out there. Right, so that's you know, all of those opportunities that are present in our community. Or maybe it's just a small sort of like voice that still hasn't been answered in anything we've talked about. But it's something you want to share with the community. And perhaps in that way, that is the most powerful way that we will continue to bring the kingdom of God here and now, is what animates you? What is it that drives you into that spirit and, and be willing to sort of stand up and proclaim the way that the disciples were transformed? What is it that is animating you today? Let us, as the psalm responsorial today really invites us to, let us listen to God. Let us receive that Holy Spirit. And let us renew the face of the earth.